I'm Dr. Charlie Evans. I'm a cardiac surgeon at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. So there are a couple things that contribute to the aorta widening or tearing. The most common thing is probably high blood pressure over a long period of time. Uh, there are also some genetic disorders that people have, such as Marfan syndrome or Lois Dietz syndrome, uh, that can cause the aorta to widen. We know that it's important to address a widened or an enlarged aorta uh, when it's identified because there's a risk of developing a tear in the aorta called a dissection. A dissection is a really bad problem and it can be difficult to deal with. And so we know if a patient's at high risk for developing a dissection, we'd like to offer them an operation before that dissection happens uh, because we think that's a safer operation and the patient will do better than if they have to come in in the middle of the night for an emergency operation. Unfortunately, most people that have an enlarged aorta don't have any symptoms. A lot of these are found incidentally if they're having a CT scan for some other reason. A person has a dissection, that is usually not subtle. Uh, patients have chest pain or back pain uh, that's uh, sudden onset and can be severe. An enlarged aorta or an aneurysm is difficult to detect based on just a history or a physical examination alone. It almost always is uh, seen on some sort of imaging. So there are various types of aneurysms that can develop in the aorta. The aorta is a large blood vessel. It's the main blood vessel in the body. It's connected to the heart. So there's a short part that's connected to the heart and then there's a curve uh, where branches come off that go to the head and the arms. And then there's a long part that uh, follows the backbone and it gives off branches to all the other organs in the body. So an ascending aortic aneurysm is an enlargement of that first part of the aorta. And that can either be uh, close to the valve, uh, which is called a root aneurysm, or it could be uh, further up, uh, closer to the arch, which could be an arch aneurysm, or it could be part of the descending thoracic aorta. One of the main indications for replacing the ascending aorta is when it reaches 5.5 centimeters or greater. Uh, because we know at 5.5 centimeters and up, the risk of developing the dissection is pretty high. Um, and the risk is greater than the risk of uh, replacing the aorta uh, during an operation. There are some reasons that we would operate at five centimeters instead of 5.5 centimeters, and that would be if the patient has some sort of genetic syndrome, or if they have a family history of an aneurysm or dissection, or if they've experienced rapid growth of the aneurysm within the past year. So probably the main develop in terms of minimal invasive surgery in the last 10 years is the development of TAVR, or a transcatheter aortic valve replacement. 10 years ago, almost any patient that came uh, to us that needed an aortic valve replacement would need uh, a sternotomy, so an incision in the chest. Uh, they would need to be on the heart-lung machine, have a breathing tube, uh, and undergo a four or five hour operation and then a three or four or five day recovery in the hospital. Now we can replace that valve through a small incision or sometimes no incision at all in the groin uh, and patients can usually go home uh, the next day. What we found for uh, very sick patients or uh, patients who are uh, older, patients who have other medical problems and we're worried about their ability to recover well from a traditional aortic valve replacement, uh, TAVR can be a great option because uh, it can typically be less risky and they can spend less time in the hospital. For a low-risk patient, the short-term outcomes uh, between a TAVOR and a traditional aortic valve replacement are the same, uh, but there are some obvious advantages to TAVOR. Patients are in and out of the hospital much sooner uh, with less pain and they can get back to their daily lives and their normal activities uh, very quickly. It's one of the nice things I think about uh, St. Joe's Medical Center is that we're a a community hospital. Uh, we're a little bit smaller, but at the same time, we're part of a larger medical system. So I think patients can uh, benefit from the resources uh, that are available to a big medical system, but in a smaller community setting. One of the things I love about being a cardiac surgeon is that uh, when I get up in the morning, uh, especially if I'm going to be operating that day, uh, I know that I'm going to make a big uh, meaningful impact on a patient's life and uh, that feels great at the end of the day for me.